Hi everyone, this is the second part of a two-part series on solving uh, trigonometric equations. Um, in this video we will be solving uh, this particular trig equation on the specified domain as well as providing a general solution. So to start with, um, I'd like you to recognize that uh, what you see in front of you is a second degree trig equation despite the fact that you do not see uh, the exponent 2. Okay, so normally we see cos squared theta equals blah 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 and we recognize it for what it is, a second degree trig equation. Um, but if you think about it, cos squared is really cos theta times cos theta. So we're multiplying two trig functions together. Now, if you have cos theta times tan theta, yeah, they're not the same, but they're still two trig functions. So it's equivalent to a second degree trig equation. Okay, so let's uh, see how we go about doing this. What you might be tempted to do to start off with is to go, hey, let's just divide both sides by cos theta and cancel, right? And so then you'd end up with tan theta is equal to 1. If you're writing this down, please stop because this is not the way that you should do it. Okay, It seems reasonable. You divide both sides by cos theta, you get tan theta is equal to 1, and you end up with theta is equal to, I think that's uh, quadrant 1, which would be uh, pi over 4, and you get quadrant 3, which is uh, negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, so keep that in mind. That is, this is not the right way to do it, but you might be wondering, well, why not? Like, um, we haven't we haven't uh, uh, broken any mathematical rules. We've simply divided both sides by cos theta. Okay, the problem is is that when you divide by cos theta, you're actually dividing by something that you're actually canceling out theta, right? If you're solving for theta but you're canceling theta in the middle of it, then you might lose some solutions, right? Like you might go, well, that's okay. I still have a theta here, but this theta might bring with it some solutions, and this theta might bring with it some other solutions. So please be careful of that. So let's try this again. Um, uh, one second here. All right, so if you um, can't cancel out cos theta, what you can do is you can bring all of the terms to one side of the equation, okay? Like we did in a previous example. So cos theta, tan theta, minus cos theta equals zero. So what I did was I subtracted cos theta from both sides. Now that you have this situation, keeping in mind that this is a second degree trig equation, you should be thinking quadratics, right? What would I do if this was a quadratic? It doesn't look like a quadratic. I don't see a squared term, but really remember this is equivalent to a squared term. So what I have here is I've got two terms that both have cos theta in common. So let's go cos theta, factor that out. I'm left with tan theta minus one. Now you might recognize the tan theta minus one because that's what we, uh, that's equivalent to what we ended up with when we just simply canceled out cos theta. Remember when we did that, we had tan theta equals one. If, and then if I subtract one from both sides, it's tan theta minus one, okay? But that's not what we're supposed to do, so I'll just do that. Okay, so there's tan theta minus one equals zero. So now, uh, this is great. This is like two factors of a quadratic equation. And so um, cos theta times tan theta minus one equals zero. So when does that happen? When cos theta is equal to zero. When tan theta is equal to one, right? So if this is zero, zero times whatever is zero. If this is one, tan theta is one, one minus one is zero times anything else is zero. Okay, so again, uh, where's my trusty unit circle? Right here, there you are. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll take this and I'll figure out where cos theta equals one. And I think I remember that cos theta is equal to one right here. Okay, I guess I'm not going with a straight line, so whatever. And tan theta equals, oh sorry, cos theta equals zero, my bad. My bad, you probably caught that. You're just waiting for me to catch that myself. This gives me a chance to go to something that's a little straighter there. Cos theta equals zero straight up and straight down, right? Where there is no x coordinate, right? Straight up, you just have zero, one, straight down, zero, negative one. And tan theta equals one, right? is smack dab in the middle of quadrants one and three. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'll put some points here on the um, ends of these terminal arms here so that we can see exactly which angles we're referring to. Okay, so in radian mode, from negative pi to pi, okay, so negative pi, I'm going this way. This would be negative pi over two. This would be negative three pi over four. Okay, uh, rotating clockwise now up to pi, but not exceeding pi, this would be pi over four. And this would be positive pi over two. And so those are my roots for part A. So part A, Theta on this domain, negative pi to pi, theta is equal to, uh, let's go smallest to greatest, negative 3 pi over 4, comma, negative pi over 2, comma, pi over 4, comma, pi over 2. Okay? And then and then part B would be uh, the general solution, which is, hmm, 
This one, yes, I could do four separate statements and just put uh, plus 2n pi on, on the ends of each of them. But now some of you might go, you know what, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to add plus 2n pi. I don't, have to, I don't have to worry about condensing statements. But here's, here's where you do need to worry about condensing statements. In a multiple choice question, I might not have the space, or even if I did have the space, I might not give you the general solution where each of these angles is um, is mentioned with a plus 2n pi at the end of it, right? I might actually condense it, and, and you need to be able to recognize which one's the correct answer. So look at this. We know that we can't get away with one statement because this angle here is not equivalent to this angle here, right? This angle here is acute. This angle here is obtuse. So unlike the previous example in a previous video where I just added 120 every time or I added 180 every time, this one I'm adding like around 45 and then I'm adding 135 and then I'm adding 45 and then I'm adding 135. Okay, so I can't get away with just simply one statement that just adds the same thing every time. But what I can get away with is I can say, look, pi over 4 plus multiples of pi. If I do that, then I'm going to cover this angle. And if I add a multiple of pi, then the next one I get is this one. And then if I add another uh, pi, then I get this one. So I'll cover these two roots and all of their coterminal angles. Now, I'll do the same thing with pi over 2. I'll take pi over 2, there's another root, plus multiples of pi, right? Which will then take me to here, which will then take me back there, there, there. So this statement covers all of the roots that are coterminal to these two roots. And this statement covers all of the roots that are coterminal to these two roots, right? And we add on an n is an element of the integers, and that's it. That's the finishing touch right there.